Chapter 1 Continued One of my seniors nudges me hard in the ribs, and I guess I'm supposed to stand up. From this point on, the one in charge continues. We answer no questions and offer no advice, so don't come to find us, we don't exist anymore. We go home for study tomorrow, and then we'll be gone, and our role here is over. So our question is, are you in, or do we give this to our next candidate? I didn't expect a question or an option. I would have preferred if they just told me to take over. There's nothing about this role that I desperately want, yet being under the control of any of the protégés in this room for even the slightest moment is a nauseating prospect. And I know that if I'm not in charge, I'll be spending many a night on surveillance, freezing my bottom off in the middle of the bush. When I'm ready, I nod, and the one in charge hands me a purple notebook and a thick, crispy folded piece of paper, which I suspect is the map outlining of who owns what in the territory wars. Then the year 12 begins to leave, and like all the things insignificant, the moments they're gone, it is like they never existed. I sit back down and prepare myself for what I know is coming. Five house leaders, ready for a battle. One common enemy, me. You don't want this, you never have. I think the comments come from the leader of Murray House, who has never really spoken to me. So the idea that he thinks he knows what I want interests me. Step down and the five of us will sign you out, Richard says, looking around at the others. You will be put out of your misery and we'll get on with running the underground. Richard's got some great ideas, the Hastings House explains. You don't have the people skills, Taylor. You never turn up to meetings. And not once did you gather intelligence against the ca cadets last year. You spend too much time in trouble with Hannah. If she's on your back... She'll be on ours. You just don't give a shit about anyone. I block them out and try to go back to the boy in the tree. Are you even listening to us? Let's just take a vote. Five says she's out and she's out. Back to the tree, inhaling the intoxicating perfumed air, listening to a song with no end, and to a boy with a story that I need to understand. This is the worst decision I've ever met, known them to make. Everyone calm down. We'll just vote and it'll be over. She's burnt down the bloody laundry when I was in her house. Who can trust her? They were Saltuna scones. The voices slice through the others and I glance up. Ben Cassidy is looking at me. I don't know what I see in his eyes, but it brings me back to reality. What are you doing, Ben? Ben asks quietly, menacingly. Ben takes his time, then looks at Richard. The one in charge gave it to her, so we should respect that. We haven't agreed that she's the leader. You need five votes against her, Ben reminds them. Murray, Hastings, darling, he says to the others in return. They refuse to look at me, and I realise they've rehearsed this. Clarence. Raffaella reckons we need to go to the prayer tree. Ben cuts in before Richard can drag him into it. I can tell they haven't discussed this with him. He's considered the weakest link, except when they need his vote. Big mistake. That's all we want back from the townies, Ben mutters, not looking at anyone. Richard glances at Ben in disgust. And of course the clubhouse is a priority. Ben starts up again and I can tell he's enjoying himself. Silence, tons of it, and I realise that I have my one vote that will keep me in. For the time being anyway. Who's in charge of the townies this year? I ask. I'm staring at Richard. He realises that I'm here to stay and despite the look in his eyes that says betrayal, backstabbing, pertinence, hatred, revenge and anything else he's planning to major in, he lets me have my moment. We'll find out sooner or later, he says. But I like this pal, Ben, I say, still staring at Richard. Yes. Who's in charge of the townies these days? 
Scherze Stangilio, moderate or fundamentalist, temperamental, so we need to get on his good side. Townies don't have a good side, Richard says, and I ignore him. Is he going to be difficult? I asked Ben. Always, but he's not a thug, Ben says, unlike the leaders of the cadets. Who? Richard barks out. I see Ben almost duck as if a hand is going to come out and whack him on the back of the head. First things first, this year we get the townies on our side, I say, ignoring everyone in the room but Ben. The chorus of disapproval is like those formula songs that seem to hit number one all the time. You know the tune in a moment and it begins to bore you in a two. We've never done that, Richard snaps, and looks where it got us. In the last few years, we've lost a substantial amount of territory. It's been split up between the cadets and townies. We haven't got much left to lose. What about the prayer tree? Ben asks again. The prayer tree's not a priority, I say, standing up. Raffaella reckons that the trade made three years ago was immoral, he argues. I try not to remember that, Raffaella. Ben and I spend most year seven together hiding out with Hannah. I can't even remember Ben's story. Heaps of foster parents, I think. One put a violin in his hands and changed his life. Do me a favour, I say to him. A tad on the dramatic side. Don't ever bring mortality into what we do here.